and welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner. They call me Wolf. Some people call it Paranormal Roundtable PRT for short. And with me is my co-host, Mushu. One and only. And Anthony. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> and so what we're doing tonight, we're talking about Dogman. Everybody knows, I'm sure if you are familiar with any of our work, you know, that we talk about this. I've had my own encounter with one. And um, it is a very hot topic right now. We talked about it a little bit uh, on our Friday live stream. If you're not uh, watching the live streams on Friday on YouTube, you need to, you need to check it out. Our ge- our guest last Friday um, was really uh, really cool. She had a lot of experiences with ghosts, things like that, and we talked about the spiritual nature of these creatures of dogmen. And so. Tonight, I have some stories for you, and I'm going to get into those in just a second. But first, we have the uh, Paranormal Roundtable group page, or or, I'm sorry, Paranormal Roundtable group on Facebook. We put the uh, we put the uh, link to the show in that group every time we drop an episode, and you can go and leave a comment, and you can have an opportunity to win an autographed book from one of many authors. And, and and a little bit of PRT swag. So go ahead and do that uh, when, when that uh, drops in the Paranormal Roundtable group. If you're not on Facebook, Paranormal Roundtable group, go join. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We talk about all kinds of things on this show. Alien abduction, Bigfoot, Dogman, Ghosts, you name it. We talk about it. Alternate realities, parallel universes, everything. Whatever you can think of in the paranormal realm, we talk about it. Uh, that being said, we have a Patreon. Yeah, it's patreon.com slash PRT podcast. We have a $5 tier, $10 tier, $20 tier. And soon to be a $30 tier. Yep. And each one of those gets you something different. If you're a $10 tier, you three months, you can get a swag uh, bag. And $20 tier, you automatically get a swag bag. $30 tier, you get an you get a upgraded swag bag. Uh, Tony... Do you want to tell us uh, the email address? Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. Yep, Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. That's how you can get a hold of me. If you send me a friend request on Facebook, which a lot of people have, please, just please let me know through Messenger that you are a listener of the show or I'm probably not going to – well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to approve it. So um, Instagram, 940, that's how you can reach me on Instagram. And I really don't do Twitter much, so – um, yeah, so just, that's how you can get a hold of me. Give me your stories and we can talk, um, or you can just send them to me and I can retell them. But anyway, these are stories that were sent to me. These are dog man stories. And, and, and I want to start, the first one I want to start off with is in Texas. And this one is in Houston, Texas. Now this one happened on the east side of Houston, Texas. And, um, it was a security guard that sent this one to me. His name is Steve. And so I wanted to tell this story, um, about a few months ago, he sent me this, he said back in 2007 when he was for, or 2000 hold on 2007 yeah 2007 uh he had an encounter when he was doing security at a a shopping center where they were actually fixing the uh the uh, pavement or whatever and they had it cordoned off and so some of the 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 businesses there they I guess were closed for several days and so somebody broke in um, it's really weird. That that part was kind of weird too. Like how they broke in, I, do, us doing security was kind of odd because they didn't really break in. It was like they were inside the store and it got ransacked and vandalized one of the stores. But they didn't really, uh, there was no signs of forced entry, which was really odd. But the back door, it was like the back door, whoever got walk, went out the back door it was like they had never used a door before because they kicked it or destroyed it or something somehow had bent it you know outward dest- destroying it like breaking it down so i thought that was really weird and when he said that he went into this particular store that was was unlocked they couldn't um ascertain like how the person got in um but it did look like the person had like destroyed the door to get out which was weird because they found weird looking prints on the door 
like somebody was like using their feet or something. Uh, also, the weird thing too was that it was barefoot. Like the person was it was barefooted, uh, so they went in and they karate kicked the crap out of the door to get out. So that was weird. And he said that the feet were ex- exceptionally long. And he goes, if I hadn't seen what I saw a couple days later after this third day of being there, he said, I would have thought it was a Bigfoot. <laughs> but he said, I was sitting there in the parking lot. And he goes, and I'm not kidding. I was sitting there eating. And this is what he said. He was eating a ham and cheese sandwich. And I'm not laughing at like, you know, but it was just so, because, you know, us doing security, we've done this a million times. You've just been sitting in a parking lot eating your lunch, you know, which is two or three in the morning, you know, and. But this guy was sitting there eating his lunch, and he sees these two. He couldn't at first ascertain what they were. They looked like dogs that were jumping up and down and getting on their hind legs and then going back down. And it looked like they were frolicking. Those are his words, not mine. Like that they were playing together. And he said that one of them was a, was a shaggy brown color. The other one was blackish brown and he said that as they got further down the street to where they were in front of where he was at, that's when he realized, like, these aren't dogs. These are something else. I don't know what these are. But he said one of them had a big old ridge on its back, and one of them was significantly smaller than the other one. Um, not width-wise. He said they were all they were both pretty thick, big dogs, big animal dogs. He thought they were. When they got right in front of him, one of them became acutely aware of his presence. And began to stare at him, and that's when he got really unnerved, and he did have a, 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 a firearm on him, and he said he was very, very uh, intimidated. And uh, he said, dude, I had a cell phone on me. Now, if anybody knows 2007, he had like a razor. <laughs> it wasn't like uh, the yeah, best. A flip phone. You're not going to take a great picture with that in the dark. So he says, you know, so I shined my flashlight on it, and I that's when I realized, he goes, to my absolute horror... These were not dogs. These were not wolves. These were something completely different. When they stood up, the black one was significantly shorter than the, than the brown one. Not as, as wide either, but it, they were both very big, thick, and larger than men. He said that the brown one looked like it was about seven to eight feet tall. The black one, he said, was about six, six and a half feet tall. And he said that when they stood up, it was really weird. It was almost like they changed posture and they, they went, they, they went from being like what he thought were like frolicking dog like beings to just looking like werewolves. He said he was sitting there just staring right at them. And it was, it was in a parking lot, um, in, on, in East Houston. Okay. So the place I guess was called Durham. Uh, plaza or something like that that was the name of where he was at or that's what's there now i don't know but anyway i'm sure you can probably look it up i don't know exactly what 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 he was guarding i just know that there was a a break-in and that they were doing some work um on the road and i guess the some of the businesses weren't getting they they, people weren't able to get in or something so when they had to close for a couple days one of them got broken into so they said you know what? let's get a security guard so anyways, he ends up – he's in the east side of Houston, and he ends up getting this this encounter that happened that was like – it was so crazy. Like he was sitting there in the parking lot, and he sees these two things. They're across the street, and he says that they stood up. There was no traffic around. He said typically it was, it was about 3 in the morning, of course, 3. And he said that I'm sitting there eating my lunch, and I see these two creatures. I mean, right in the middle of Houston. I mean – Which is crazy. Like, I've gotten reports of Bigfoot in the middle of Houston. It's not like it's unheard of. Towns, cities, you know, in Texas, they they tend to be uh, built, uh, have a lot of wooded areas, you know, like San Antonio, Austin, Houston. There's a lot of woods around these cities. And so there's always a lot of places where people can go. And, I mean, like, if, if you were to go to Houston, go like the woodlands. I mean, it's called the Woodlands. I mean, like when you go when you go out of that mall, you know what I'm talking about, Anthony. It, you're you're like out in the woods, and then you go back out, and you're like, you go down the street, and then you look to the right, and there's a mall. <laughs> you're like, and you feel like you're in the woods, and you're like, dude, this is like there's big old tall trees everywhere. Yeah, it's well, I mean, dense. even in Austin, there's that place oh, Austin, off 35. Yeah. You take one turn, and all of a sudden, you're like 
down the creepiest road you've ever seen. Oh, over the, by the jack the of the box. Crazy yeah. big trees. What is, like, that, which, what, what is that metric? That is so creepy. That it's neighborhood. so weird. It's like right, you wouldn't I think, think so. You just take one turn. turn. Head, but yeah, and, yeah. It's like you, you end that, up that's in how it is though in Houston. But you know, this guy. This happened in the middle of downtown. Not middle of of East Side Houston. You know, it's crazy. Um, and when you go and you look there now, I think there's like a a few different stores or whatever there. It might be different. You know, it's been so long since he was there. But he did security there, and so the, these two creatures are walking down the road, and they stop and they stare at him. And then he's going like, oh, my gosh, I'm literally looking at two werewolves. He goes, and, and he goes, I would never in a million years have dreamed that this that I would be staring at something that looks so, you know, weird. And so he's sitting there, and he's like, and I have a gun on me. He's like, but it's not. <laughs> he goes, it's not a gun that's going to do anything. I mean, he goes, I had a, a nine millimeter, you know. Um. Yeah, I mean, your Glock's not going to stop these things, dude. And he did not feel confident enough taking that and, like, even pointing it at them. And so he's like, dude, he didn't know what to do, so he drives off. He just leaves. He leaves post, and he takes off. And then he comes back. He feels like, well, I'm going to get fired. He needed the job. So he comes back. He's very apprehensive, and he he's it's almost 6 o'clock. So he comes back, and there were a couple people that would come in in the morning. Um, and one of the stores that was there at that time. So he would just like, he was there and then he took off. So he, the next night he did the same thing. Like he went in, as soon as it got dark, he bailed. And then he came back at, in the morning. Well, here's what happened. He decides that he's going to, to, to just do this until this thing, this gig is up. He said it was supposed to go till Thursday. He had been there since Sunday. And so he was like, first three days, nothing happened. And then this weird stuff was going on. So he was like, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, everything's fine. Then Wednesday, I see this thing. And then they said, oh, we're going to extend it through the weekend. <laughs> so he's got to stay there uh, at this shopping center where he saw literally two werewolves. Here's what happened. At one point, he had to use the restroom really bad. And now the place down the street, the store down the street that closed at, at midnight, it was like one o'clock. So he would have to leave to go way, you know. So he thought, you know what? It was the la it was supposed to be the last night of the of the of the deal, whatever. And the guy that had hired them had shown up earlier in the night. So thank goodness he was there. So he showed up about eleven o'clock or whatever and just said, Hey, how's everything going? Everything okay, yeah. And then he took off. And he was afraid he might come back. Well, he had to use the restroom, and the only place that he could use the restroom was that original place that it got broken into. Well, that particular place had fixed the door like by the second day he was there. So he had no, there was no way to go in. You couldn't use bathroom, nothing. So he stuck sitting out in his vehicle. He said he didn't have a very large vehicle. And having seen those creatures, it scared the crap out of him. So he said, you know what? I had to use the bathroom really bad. So I decided I was going to go behind one of the dumpsters. He's just, just doing number one, right? So he's going, he gets out and he decides to walk out there and he hears this growling noise and then a grunting noise. And he looks over and he sees one of those creatures like sniffing around the side of the dumpster. And then he sees, he sees it pop up real quick and it puts its, what looked like, he said, weird little pod like hands with long fingers up onto the, the, the garbage uh, the trash can, whatever. And then at that point, he sees the second one pop up in the dumpster. And he's staring at He said he's about six feet away from it, dude. And he said they both kind of looked at each other, and then their mouths were completely closed. And then they both, like, opened their mouths and began to snarl and looking like they were going to attack him. And this is where it gets really hairy, uh, no pun intended. The, the, the big brown one got down and started, like, kind of low crawling towards him. And was just like in attack mode. And he goes, dude, I had, all I had was my, what felt like a pea shooter, you know? He says, I, po I pulled it out. I pointed it in their direction. He said, they both stopped. The black one jumped out. He's like, literally just jumped up and out. Like somebody that would put their arms on the side of a fence and just jump over it and was out of the dumpster. And it literally began to growl louder at him. And he said he just backed up, backed up, backed up, and eventually got in his truck. And he said, dude, they, they at that point, they went right up toward his truck, one on either side. 
Um, and he said he had a very small vehicle, very small little truck, one of those little small toy, they call them toy trucks, like little bitty ones, you know? And they, I think he said it was like a, a little Toyota or whatever that was like old, you know? It was an old one, like he'd restored it. And it was like his dad's or something. And he decided to gun it and take it, take off out of there. And he jumps the curb and goes out into the street and his truck was pretty low to the ground because his his brother had like lo- it was like a lower lowered it you know, and uh, one of these things runs alongside the, the side of his truck and literally rams its slams its hand into the the passenger side window, shattering the glass. And the other one was literally holding onto the back of his truck and he gunned it and that thing jumped up and was on the back tailgate. The tailgate opened up and it fell off. And he said that it sunk the truck down to where it was scraping the cement. Like it was it, it, and, and the tires were like rubbing against the, the, uh, the wheel well. And he said that, dude, he goes, I was driving down the street. I went up on the curb. I freaking messed up the rim and I was on the median. And then I ended up going on the wrong way down the run down the wrong way street. I turned down this one street. He goes, and I was like, I realized I was like on the wrong side of the road. And he's like, dude, I didn't know what to do. I thought I was going to die. And he goes, I look over and I realize, and I'm just driving panicky, you know, driving, and these creatures are gone. So about six months later, he was working at another assignment uh, out on the edge of town, and he talked to a guy who was from Texas City. And this guy was uh, a guy who was big into Bigfoot and, you know, all this other stuff, kind of like we, he's kind of like us, you know. Um, and I, in fact, I said, if you still know the guy, <laughs> send him to my show because he'd probably like our show, but he was all into that. So he said, dude, he said, what you encountered was, was a, where was a dog man. They look like werewolves. He goes, but up in Michigan, he's like, they see them all the time. And then he told him about, you know, Wisconsin and dog man and all that. And he started talking to him about the, the, the dog man phenomena. And this guy actually, um, kind of enlightened him, you know, because he had no idea uh, what it was that he had seen. He was like me when I first saw what I saw. He just thought he was looking at a uh, a uh, uh, werewolf, which we, we don't really know. Um, it could be. I mean, you know, that could be what it is that we're dealing with here. Uh, we really don't know if, if that's what uh, what's going on. But anyway, th- this guy told him about Linda Godfrey and told him, hey, you need to check out these books about Linda Godfrey, which is actually how he ended up g- to my show because this guy heard me on Dogman Encounters a long time ago and said, finally got the nerve up to, to, to send me his encounter. Now, here's something that's that's connected to the Dogman phenomena that a lot of people don't understand and they just don't have the – like they don't get it. Having had an encounter with these things back in, in, uh, in 1990, like I did, for years I had nightmares about these creatures, okay? He had nightmares about these things for a long time, and until he met this guy that he worked with at a post from Texas City, he had never really met anyone that he could share his encounter with and be like, hey, man, I saw these two werewolves that, that on two different occasions, at, literally when I was working at a shopping center, in the east side of Houston. And this guy uh, basically had finally opened up to somebody because this guy was big into uh, ghosts and UFOs and stuff like that. And he was reading a fate magazine. And that's how the conversation started. And then he, and then that guy turned him on to Bisa Bray Road, Linda Godfrey's books, and said, hey, you should check out you know this, this author, Linda Godfrey, Anyways, this guy, he, he gets to know this other dude, and this dude tells him about Dogman, and he had never heard that term before. So he goes down the rabbit hole, ends up going to Dogman, you know, and whatever. That's it. And he finds out what this thing is, and then he tells me, and now I'm telling you, and that's his story. So we're going to move on, but we're going to stay in Texas. This one happened in Beaumont. Now, Beaumont's not that far from Houston, um, but uh, this one's crazy. Um, Th- these people, th- these people lived right outside of the city limits of Beaumont, um, and it was where this took place. And this happened a long time ago. This guy is like a lot older than me, but he remembers it very vividly. And he it was he said it was 1977, 
And he had his family lived on a little plot of land, uh, a little bit out of outside of Beaumont. And he said that back then, you know, you didn't go to town every day. Like you didn't just go to the grocery store to get food. His family raised uh, chickens and they had rabbits. And a lot of times they weren't pets. They were just, they, they were food. And he was forced to um, help his mom get them animals and kill and eat them, you know. Well, it's a living back then. Yeah, and it was a living. But he did have one rabbit that he got to keep as a pet, and he named it Zero. <laughs> a rabbit, his name was Zero because his dad was kind of a jerk, I guess, um, from what he said. His dad was kind of a mean-spirited guy. He said the rabbit wasn't worth nothing, you know, just called it Zero. And so he <laughs> – but he took a liking to it, and his mother basically stood up to his dad and said, let him keep it, you know. But he had a dog, too. He had a couple of them, actually. Um, and one of them was his mother's dog, an inside dog. And, and now that dog's name was Lucy. And he said that one day she was outside walking, or, or not walking, but like letting the dog out. And the dog ran to the edge of the fence, and they had this this like – Partial privacy fence is what he called it. And then it was like chain linked. It was like patchwork, basically. And right where the dog was barking, there was something there. So as the dog is sitting there barking, the dog turns around and starts to go back toward his mother. And this black, hairy arm hand and hand come out and grab it from its back. It was a Cocker Spaniel, a little, little dog, a little harmless dog. And then it just literally pulled it up under the fence while the dog was yelping. And then she just hears this crunch noise and then there's no more. Like it's over. There's no more sound. And she was horrified, had no idea what that was or what it could have been. And she freaked out. So a couple of days later, she was talking to one of the neighbors who, who lived, you know, a couple of miles away and they were all very rural people. And the neighbor was like, yeah, we saw some weird wolf-like creature running around uh, our yard one, da- one day, and then it, it, took, it took off with one of our cats. Now, they had cats because cats kept vermin away, you know? And so it just took off with one of their cats. We're semi-wild anyway. So it wasn't like they were, you know, heartbroken over that particular whatever loss, but it was just such a weird-looking creature. And so they started uh, – uh, keeping their dogs uh, close to the house um, and keeping them on a chain and, and, and started uh, keeping the lights on and just being very uh, proactive, keeping, you know, their animals close by. Um, so the, the mom said, you know, told, told his dad, you know, there's something in the neighborhood, you know, in our, in our, in our area. And I think that's what took Lucy. Well, he had another dog named Sam. That dog ended up going missing couple days after Lucy. Um, and that dog had a habit of like wandering off cause it was a male, wasn't neutered. And then it would come back, you know, and then it would, it was, it was like a, you know, he said it was a roguish dog. It was part lab, part sh- shepherd. <clears throat> and it would just do what it was doing, but it never showed, it never came back. It would always come back. And he said one day it just never came back. And then he said one day he was sitting in his living, in his uh, bedroom and, uh, he was on the phone with his grandmother and he was had one of those, you know, phones with the long cords, and he was walking uh, or walking around the house talking to his grandmother. He went to his bedroom, and he said right there in the window of his bedroom was this wolf-like creature standing there. That he, The only way he could describe it was it was grayish fur, smoke-colored fur, and it was an absolute werewolf. He goes, dude, there was no, like, if you looked at that thing, it looked like something from The Howling. <clears throat> and he said that it just stood there staring at him. And he said it, was, it wasn't it was like right up against the window. He could see it in the window, but it was like just kind of staring at him. And it was all, it was down on all fours, but it was a crouch down like where a human would, like if a human was just crouched down on all fours with the arms down in between the spread legs. And he said this thing was looking right at him. And he was just like, grandma, there's something staring at me in my window. I'm going to have to call you back. And he said that he just dropped the phone <clears throat> and he ran uh, like into the kitchen and he grabbed a knife because that's all he had. And he did not have access to his dad's guns. He was only like eight years old. So he had no way to 
whatever. And he goes, dude, the, the, the best weapon I had was a, was a butcher's knife. Like, a, you know, he goes, my dad had a couple guns, sh- shotguns, whatever. He goes, I didn't, was not allowed to use them. His older brother wasn't there because his dad and his older brother were in town. And so he literally, after he grabbed the knife, he ran to the phone. He called, he called the, uh, called his grandma back. His grandma called the police. Now, what he told me was back in 1977 in rural Texas, it wasn't like you could just call 911. You had to have the number to the police, right? So his grandmother called and got the police over there. And he's like, Grandma, I need, you know, she's crying. So her and her husband, which was his grandfather, showed up. And he, they, the grandfather went outside walking around with a rifle, showed him exactly where he saw the creature, what it was, what it looked like, blah, blah, blah. It was gray. Um, and it was tall. He said it was about seven foot tall. Here's where it gets really messed up. The next night, like after his parents come home, his dad is not one of those people that didn't believe because it happened to the mother. He said his dad was one of those kind of people who would fight and argue with anybody, but he didn't really mess with his wife. Like his wife could kind of, you know, get the better of him. So he just kind of like let things go when it came to arguing with her. So she's like, you know, look, I saw this thing. Our son, one of our sons has seen this thing. And then their daughter began to hear like heavy breathing and growling and grunting noises outside of her window. So she went and told the mom and dad, Hey, there's something going on. The next night after he had had the incident where he saw the thing, he hears a scratching, almost tapping noise on the glass. He jumps up and he runs into his brother's room and tells his brother, his his brother comes in there. So his name is Eric. Eric. He says, Eric, wake up. There's something in here. There's something in here. Gets him to go into the other room. Now his brother was seven years older than him, that particular brother. Um, And that brother ran in there and he had a 22 pistol. So he says, okay, step back. And and the window was partway open. Now, the weird thing he said was, I don't remember how, I mean, he goes, after I saw that thing, he's like, I closed windows and I locked them. He goes, and I, and I, I, I was not, there's no way I would have opened that window. He goes, I don't know how that window ended up unlocked and partly open. He's like, but it was. And his brother says, stand back. And they could hear a crunching noise, like a crunching, grinding noise. He didn't know what it was. So he opened the blinds. And there, right there in front of the window, was this werewolf-looking creature with a partially eaten rabbit hanging out of its mouth. And it was just crunching it, eating it. And he said it was horrifying, dude. And he said that his brother literally <laughs> put the gun up to the underneath the screen and pulled the trigger. And shot it point blank in what it would have been his abdomen. And he said the thing just kind of fell back, dropped the rabbit, and then kind of lurched to the right and then was gone. The next day, well, of course, that night, the dad goes and freaks out. Everybody's like outside looking around with flashlights. The next day, they go outside. They see blood all over the ground. Did not know whether or not it was from the creature or from a rabbit. But three of their chickens had been had been killed, and then like three or four of the rabbits had been killed, and they had the the rabbits uh, caged up around the one side of the house where there was like the dog run, and they had literally their uncle raised and I, this is something I know about mastiffs gave them two of his mastiffs to sit in that dog run where they had put the they had put all the uh, rabbits, yeah. But the animals that were running around loose, like the roosters and, and and two or three of the rabbits that weren't that didn't fit in the hutch there, it killed them. And it said he said the weird thing was that the dogs didn't bark. It didn't bark. Like these are mastiffs, dude. Like I mean, they're trained dogs. His uncle raised them. His dad really didn't like them because he had bad experience with one that tried to bite him one time, and so he was like. He didn't want one of these big, mean dogs, but he told him, you know, he said, look, I need some help here, you know. So his uncle was a nice guy. He decided to go ahead and stay with them for a few days and try to help them with this problem. Well, one evening they were out working on his dad's car. And it was it was about a week after the incident where his brother, uh, Eric, had shot through the window of the, the, the screen and hit this thing. And he said they hear a, like a crunching noise, like like debris leaves, something moving, you know. They shined a light, and there 
right there on the edge of the property was this creature. And it was just sitting there and it was like on all fours and it was eating something. And then when they looked, they saw that it was one of their cats. And it would literally just took it, grabbed the half of the cat and his, his, his uh, brother had a rifle right there, started shooting at it. The, the dog, the dog man, I guess you want to call it, like jumped, ran over, ran over a partially dilapidated part of the fence and was gone. Over the next few days, they rebuilt the fence, built it up, made it really tall, um, fixed the, the rabbit hutches and they put the, the dogs where they could roam around free in the yard. And his dad and his brother and his brother's friend started sleeping out in the yard, literally. After about four days of them sleeping in the yard, this thing tried to return. And when it st- at one point they had like a spotlight, like they just spotlighted it. As soon as it put its p- partial body over the fence, they all just shot it. Like boom, 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 boom. And that they all said that they hit it too, and they could see blood coming off of it. It wasn't one of those where we hear about where you hear about the fur, yeah. you know, coming off of it and it doesn't do nothing. And so the but then so so they all ran around the other side and and the, they they had contacted the sheriff's department, let them know, hey, this is going on. Um sheriff's department shows up, they go out in the yard, and they and they they see blood everywhere, but they don't see this creature. Weird thing. <laughs> okay. About two or three miles from from the the neighbor that was that was their friend or whatever said, "Hey, there was a guy that found they found in a field shot to death, literally shot to death um in one of the farmer's fields on the other side of Beaumont. Don't know if that's connected. They found a body supposedly um don't know if that's a if that's what you know I don't know what that was. I don't know if that's true. I don't know I just know that this is what I was told. And that supposedly they found a guy who had been shot, killed, you know, um, weird story it is a very weird story. I know. Uh, but I mean, is was it, that the end of it? Yeah. I mean, that was it. There was no more predation, no more, sh- this thing wasn't showing up anymore. Nothing. I mean, that was it. I mean, either way they succeeded, whether they killed it or got, just got rid of it. So it stopped killing their animals. Was it a guy though turning into like, a, either, either way? If it wasn't, it left them alone at the very least. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and they achieved whatever. Hmm. Um, of course, needless to say, I mean, you know, the sheriff's department was aware that they had shot what they thought was a werewolf. Um, the guy that was shot and killed, you know, the, the, the you know several miles away, um, they said that it did not look like a homicide, not in the way that it was like, you know, them that did it. They knew it was a homicide, but they don't think that they did it. The reason being was because there were no tire tracks or anything that led to that body being there. Yeah, he wasn't going to get shot that much. Yeah. Wow. All they saw were, were really weird, elongated, human-like footprints that led up to that spot where he was found. And then he was found there dead. So there would have been other footprints of humans carrying it. So that's why they weren't messed with about it. Um, and they just were like, they were just told, hey, you know. This is too far. I, I know, there's no way that yeah. they can say that they did it. It was too far away. And there were no tire tracks anywhere. Also just doesn't make sense in any sort of way for, you know, for uh, it's like three or four guys to be shooting and then immediately call the cops. After they just shot someone mm-hmm. and be like, hey, we just shot this monster over there. You know, it, I don't know. It just, it doesn't really make sense for them to, for them to be, have anything to do with it. Yeah. And, if it and was just a pure homicide, just normal homicide. Exactly. And the neighbor, the neighbor that told them, hey man, there, there's a, there's a guy that died, blah, blah, blah. Um, they actually called the sheriff's department themselves to, mm-hmm. to talk to them about it. It wasn't the sheriff's department didn't come out there and go, hey. You know, no, you I'm guys. sure back then they could just keep shooting all night and the cops would <laughs> yeah. come. <laughs> yeah, but but they were good friends with, with with the police too. And I said, well, did you think that played a role in them not really, you know, investigating it and, and you know being? You know, he said, well, maybe, maybe not. He goes, but he goes, I really think that it was a werewolf. I don't know. I mean, you can be the judge of it. I don't. I don't know. I just that's that's a very crazy story. It's weird. 
It's um, like either super coincidental, which as you, we don't believe in here, mm-mm. or it's exactly as w- what we think. Like this, this might be some kind of skinwalker or changer of some sort, and just got caught. You know, by these four guys, he kept bothering these. This, I'm, pr- I'm assuming the entire area, bothering the entire area, and eventually someone took care of it, and. Yeah, if, and, and would it be, I mean, would it be a skinwalker or would it be a werewolf I don't, I don't or what would you call it's, it's it? It's weird I mean. because it's like everything that I'm hearing makes me think dog, man. I mean, except for really the fact that that much blood came out of it and then that, you know, that, like that, that's what's weird about it is and you're not really seeing any other ones too. It's like, it's, it sounds like it's the same one that keeps coming the gray one, this this gray one that keeps coming. So it's like either a loner from its pack and it's just doing this on its own, or it's maybe some kind of skinwalker who's has to be by themselves because they don't, they're not going to fit in with dogmen, you know? So uh, it's just a really weird story. It is. And the, the coincidences that do line up just make it even more weird. Because, like, what are the odds the next night you find a dead body mm-hmm. and then everything stops after you find yeah, and that? And I don't think it was the – I'm looking at my notes. I don't think it was the next night. It was two nights later. Oh, okay. So, but yeah. it's, like, close enough to where, like, it's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, like, it, it's just too many things that happen, which were, like, circumstantial that, that could lead you to something. But you can't really be like, oh, that's that's what it is, even though everything wants it like that in our – in my opinion, makes me want to believe that that dude was definitely turning into a werewolf and got shot. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Yes, could it be that someone else killed him? 100%. And it's just, I just don't understand how, you know, one night they're shooting at a werewolf. Two nights later, they find a dead guy with these long, weird-looking footprints leading up to him and how you could be like, oh, they're not connected. Mm Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, all the activity stopped. That's what really makes me think that there, it's there's a connection there. Mm-hmm. Here, here's a weird phenomenon that I was going to talk about. Now, this one happened in Texas too. We're just going to th- here's here's a weird one, and, and and I've got a couple like this, and I've always wondered what these are. Um, but this one happened just south of Corpus Christi. Now, Corpus Christi is. Probably the la- what the last major city before you get to the valley, right in Texas. Yeah, and so you get a lot of weird reports south of Corpus, um, pterodactyls, you know, like uh, you know stuff in Brownsville. You get these weird reports of these small T Rex looking things, and you get Dogman reports down there. Um, but this was something like I said, it was so weird, uh, and I don't, I don't really know how to define it. This were four teenagers. That this happened to them back in 2017, and they were driving uh, down the road just south of Corpus Christi, Texas, and it was they were heading down to uh, Padre for spring break, whatever uh, South Padre, and which is kind of weird. I was I even asked them this too. I was like, why not just go to Padre Island, you know, right there, or go to Port Aransas? I guess because they lived right there and they're there all the time, so it's better if you go. You know, it's always greener. The grass. So they were going to South Padre, uh, whatever, to each his own. So anyway, I kind of asked him that. And he said, you know, they were teenagers at the time, you know, now they're in their early 20s, whatever. And um, so it, it was really weird. The guy that told me this story, I actually met him at the mall. But he said, dude, we were driving down the road and I, and I actually met his friend, let's put it that way, that worked at the mall. And that's how I met this guy. And he said, I, I gave him a card and he's like, you got that little werewolf on there. He goes, my friend's got a werewolf story. Well, I don't know if that's what this was, but it was definitely along that vein. And they were driving along, and it was late, and they had all they had they had waited until the last person had gotten off work, um, which was like eleven o'clock. She was like a waitress, and so they all got together and said, "Okay, well, let's go down to South Padre, whatever." And so it was like you know midnight, and they're driving down the road, and there's long stretches where there's not a whole lot, you know, it's just in the middle of nowhere. And they pulled over on the side of the road to uh, use the, use the restroom. Now it wasn't a functioning restroom rest stop. They were just going to go to a little, you know, one of those little picnic stops and 
guy had to take a leak. He, I mean, it was nature's calls, whatever. So he gets out and he's doing what he has to do. And they're all sitting there talking and joking and laughing and playing around, playing music, whatever. And one of them says, what is that? And and the other two are still kind of talking. He goes, what is that? He goes, look, look at that. And then they look and they see the, what this thing that came walking out of the, of the tree line while their friend's taking a leak. Her friend's name was Roberto. And they told Rob, Rob, Roberto, they said, like, hurry up, get in the car, let's go. And he's like, what? What's the big deal? And he's like, the guy, he had been drinking. The driver wasn't the, the one using the bathroom. It was the passenger. He'd been drinking. And he says, you know, they started kind of chastising him. I mean, like, oh, you had to use the bathroom because you're drinking or whatever. And he goes, he goes, oh, now y'all going to give me a hard time. And he's like, no, there's something right there on the other side of this picnic area. So he he finally turns and he looks and he sees it. And he basically comes face to face with what looked like a wolf on its hind legs, but it also looked like you could it was rotting. Hmm. What, and, and I've gotten one of these out of Illinois, too. And this is another one. I'll talk about this on the show at some point, um, but not tonight. But he said, dude, and this isn't the first time I've heard of this. Now, I call this one zombie werewolf because I don't know what to call it. But he was very adamant that this creature, he said this thing, he said it was about seven foot tall. It was very scrawny and skinny. And he goes, and it was, it had its arms kind of sticking out at its sides. And he said, at first, I thought that it was like an, an emaciated coyote that had been stretched out and hung up on a stick. And I said, why did you think that that's what it was? This is a guy that was in the car. And he said, because he was in the back seat. He says, dude, that's what I thought it was. And then I, thought I saw it moving. He said, but the movement looked so weird and unnatural. And then I realized, he goes, the upper body was more like a man. But you could, he said one of the legs, you could see a bone like sticking, like, like you could see it where, where there was like no flesh, like the fur and the flesh, everything was gone and you could see muscle in there and the lower legs looked like a cross between a man's and a wolf's. And he said it had the backward bent legs, like, you know, how dog like legs, whatever. And he said that you could see that it was just like, it was an emaciated looking, uh, werewolf. And he said that part of its face was rotted away. You could see like the jaw and everything on the left like side of its head. And he goes, dude, he goes, what the heck is that? And they could not wrap their mind around what they were seeing. And their friend was just standing there mesmerized. When he finally got, you know, he got the energy to move and actually like run to the car. I say that because what he claimed was he felt like he, he became drained of his energy and he couldn't move. And this thing was getting closer to him, but it was moving like unwieldy and it was like not fluid. You know what I mean? Like it was moving weird. Like it was like something was wrong with it. Not, not, not only was it like zombified looking or whatever, but he said that his teeth, some of his teeth looked like they weren't intact and that there were no eyes. Like where there should have been eyes. He said he saw what looked like, like some sort of light or something, but there were no eyes. Like you would see like an animal's eyes. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was interesting when he said that the eyes are kind of illuminating it, like it's self-illuminating, whatever. I said, what color? He said they were white. Well, he got in the car finally, and they they took off. And when they got further down the road, they see this ball of light that, that's now following their car. So I don't – now here's where it gets dicey. I don't know if this thing turned into a ball of light um, or it got into a ball of light or – I don't know how the ball of light – what it has to do with that with that creature or if it has to do with that creature, but it was chasing behind their car. And they said that it got right up to, to the back window. And I said, did y'all look back and see what it was? He goes, yeah, me and the, the girl that were in the back seat, we did. We looked. Um, we, you know, it was three guys and a girl. Um, the girl in the back seat was the, the driver's uh, girlfriend, but she got, uh, what do you call that? The the guy up front had gotten sick or whatever, uh, car sickness, so he had to sit up front. At least that's what he said. We know people who say that and they're full of crap. But I said, yeah, he probably just didn't want to sit in the back seat because we know people like that. Anyways, I'm not going to mention any names, Alec. But anyway, th this this thing was in the back seat, and he said that that uh, or the girl was in the back seat, and they were looking at, at the back window, and it was right behind him. 
And I said, when you looked at it, did it do anything? Did, did you notice anything weird? He goes, other than it was just following us and we were going about 85 miles an hour? No. He said, it just kept pace with us. And I said, did you see anything in the ball of light? He said, no, it was just light. And he goes, but it was very bright, like it, it, like brighter than the sun. Like it was, I turned around to look at it. All I could see was just a bright white light that burned my eyes. Like if, you know, being security guards, like if someone was holding a flashlight to you. Well, like a thousand lumens right mm-hmm. in your eyes. Or like that one that Nelly bought me. Oh, that, was, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> the one the you could see from, from, from space. The daylight flashlight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th- this thing was just following behind the, the, the vehicle and he goes, we were hauling, dude. He goes, we were hauling. I mean, it was, it was bad. He goes, and this thing, and it kept pace with them. He said a good 10 minutes. It was just right there. And he goes, what do we do? And they're screaming, what do we do? And there's no vehicles anywhere around. And then finally he goes, this thing veers off. Right. And then, and then when they kept driving for a while or whatever, they kept driving and they, they see this highway patrol on the side of the road. And so he says, we should stop. We should tell the high patrol, you know, what we just saw. And, and, and so the guy that's been drinking or whatever, and he's like, no, nah, I don't do that. And he's like, why? He goes, well, you know, I got something on me. And he's like, okay, that's great. So they didn't stop and ask the high patrol for help. And he goes, that's great. So they told R- Roberto, he was like, you know, and Raymond was the guy that was driving. So Raymond tells him, he's like, why would you not tell us all this? You know? And so, he said whenever they would talk about this story, Roberto would tell people, because he was the one that was closest to it, what it looked like. And people would say, oh, he was drinking and doing drugs. He was smoking. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, and he said, dude, he had smoked before they had left on the trip. And he said he wasn't, he claims he wasn't high. He had just had a few beers and he had to use the bathroom. Well, that kind of discredits the story because, you know, then he's the one that got the best look at it. But the guy that was in the back seat, the one that I talked to, he was like, man, no way, dude. I saw this thing. Look, I saw clearly looking at it. He's like, it looked like a zombie, you know, looking werewolf, you know. And uh, he said it was a full moon. Like he said it was like a, like a, or it was a, he didn't say it was a full moon. He said the moon was bright. Like it was very bright. Was it three? Was it what do you mean? Was it three o'clock? Oh no, I, I don't know what time it was. Mm. He said they left Corpus about midnight. No, about one, I guess. Mm. Cause he said that they left at midnight. It was an hour into it. If um, it was at three, that'd be yeah, that would be pretty. But he said there was moonlight. He could mm. see by the moonlight, you know. Um, and I don't know what you know what spring break he was. You know where they where they were like what because everybody has different spring break. I didn't ask that, so I don't know if it was full moon or not, but. That's a pretty crazy story. And like I said, I've heard one similar to that. That's not the only one I've gotten of that. And I'm sure after I talk about this, I'm probably going to get, you know, somebody giving me another weird one. But I have, that, you know, those those two right there in particular are, are, are really uh, odd. Um, now, the other one that I have is actually from uh, Illinois. It's from like Springfield, Illinois. And it was not, it did not involve a ball of light or anything like that, but same, same sort of a same scenario. Like I said, I'll tell that one on the show, maybe this coming Friday, whatever. So stay tuned for that folks. I'll, I'll give that story, but give me your thoughts on this one. I have some pretty interesting thoughts. I, I, the first thing I thought of when you spoke about this zombified dog man was the not deer. And I don't remember, or I don't know if you remember, but during that the episode when we spoke about the nod deer, I came up with a theory about like, what if these are corpses that have been taken over by some kind of entity or spirit or whatever, and they're being forced along? That's why they seem rotting. That's mm-hmm. why they seem dead is because they're literally just dead bodies moving around. Being reanimated. Being reanimated. Not really in the sense that it's the same thing coming back. That's why they have like awkward movements and it's like they're they're not used to their body. But what if it's like something entering them like at the moment of death or like some at the same time as that. And that's so, why they look so weird and they move so weird. So you're saying a dog man creature dies. Mm-hmm. And then some sort of demon. To, it's already a demon. I well, I mean, mean like technically, well, I mean, you know, well, just like the not I deer. Know. You know, it's like the the deer died uh, and something entered it, and then that would also explain the white ball of light that you that was seen afterwards. Like it left the body to come try to get one of their bodies or, or to chase after them. 
but it, it just kind of like that's the first thing that when you're just telling the story that made me think like oh it's funny that you know i had that kind of same idea for not deer and now we have another zombified creature sort mm -hmm. of awkward movements rotting flesh kind of the same uh, mo mo and like the now we have an actual ball of light chasing them so it makes mm -hmm. me think like it could be something entering a corpse's body and and piloting and if you were going to choose a corpse a dog man seems like a really good one to choose even if it's all strung up and emancipated and bones uh, emancipated. No, I'm not emancipated. Emaci emaciated, emaciated yeah and bones sticking out and rotting you know half his face missing like it's still an apex predator at that point I'm, what do you think anthony as silly as it sounds i i try to stick to like the most basic like down earth expl explanation for things if this thing got bit on the face by a brown recluse would that not just start like rotting his yeah, but what like, about the leg? What about the bone sticking and out the, the leg? Sticking out of, yeah. And but the ball of light, you know? Yeah. yeah. What about it's it? Weird. So, part I mean, of like, teeth. I'm not saying that, that it's a completely natural the eyes are uh, gone. creature. Yeah. It's just that uh, um, if it's a spiritual creature uh, that's taking a physical form, it's probably still subject to, like, certain diseases and, like, mange. And what if it's brujeria? Yeah. That'd be interesting, though. Is that is that a question? Do these physical, when they spiritual creatures enter a physical form, or can they be affected by physical creatures? I mean, yeah, I, I don't Things? know. I mean, I mean they have to play by the laws of like you know, by physical diseases. And, yeah, and, like yeah. well, I mean, like venom, things like that. Well, like Linda yeah. Godfrey, we were talking about her earlier in the show. Well, let's go to Linda. She she always said, and you you've talked to her with me, mm -hmm. Tony. And one of the things she told us was that when they enter our world, they have to play by the rules of our world. Eventually, they have to eat, they have to drink, they have to sleep. So, I mean, you know, I, I guess if you're looking at it from that standpoint, you know, like, I mean, if it comes into our world and has to be a part of it, eventually it's going to have to take on all those duties. Do you think, is it maybe, since they feed on fear, you know, the, the uh, spiritual creatures, do you think uh, it's so like- So this was a creature that was trying to maximize fear out of them. Or is it one that's been starved of fear? It's then they literally just start decomposing and rotting and they're forced back into their spiritual what, state. What, what if it is literally a werewolf like the last story and it, and, and it's, and it, the guy, uh, like he, if he changes back, he dies or something. Maybe he's rotting. Maybe it's a skinwalker that's Maybe rotting. Maybe he got I don't so know. damaged like that yeah, he can't like, change yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, I'm definitely of the opinion that its appearance is not something that's done on purpose. It, it's just I don't know. Some, it just happened. Yeah, that way. something, yeah, I'm something sure. happened somehow, some oh, way. Yeah. Well, going back to the first story with the security guard, where, where Stephen had the encounter over at the shopping center in Houston on the east side. What was going on with that one? I mean, were those werewolves? It kind of seemed like normal dogman behavior: dumpster diving, uh, wary of guns. You know, recognize and being wary of weapons. But why would they be in the middle of the city? I mean, to me, middle of the city of Houston to, to blend in, you'd have to. It's like you said, there's forests everywhere all over yeah, the place. But, I mean, I don't know that area. I haven't gone and looked at that area to go see. I don't know much about it. Um, I mean, I don't even think I've driven through that area. I don't know what it looks like or anything. Um, I've been through East Houston, but I don't remember ever going to that area at all. But I got to wonder, like, what if they were where? What if those are werewolves and they were just trying to blend in, like they like by day? Because the 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 thing that got me was the the place that was broken into. Like it was like, now, yeah, I never asked you, what was that store? Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I, I don't I don't know the name of the store. Well, I mean, like, what do they sell? Uh, back then, I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know what it, what what it was. He just said there was a store that was broken into, and you know, and th it was something kicked its way out. You know, all what they if, had was like a heel print. What if it was like a, a worker working late night, got stuck, turned into a world. Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's a weird, I mean, you know, that sounds crazy, but we talk about crazy stuff anyway. But that's one thing that I thought I was like, you know, and when we were going over, um, me and the, the, the person that wrote this in, we're going over the story and I'm going like, what, I mean, what do you think? He said, I think they were werewolves. He said, I saw humanness in the eyes. He said it wasn't an animal of any kind. He said this thing and, – and another thing I was going to say too, I asked him if there was any sort of communication. He said that he thought that maybe there was like the, the, like the, the, the second creature um, 
after he had pulled out his weapon, was telling him, no, 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 no. But he's like, maybe it was just in my mind and I was thinking, no, no, no. Confuse no. the growler, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. And so I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know. No pun intended. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, it was weird. So anyway, folks, that's what we got for tonight. I hope you enjoyed these uh, Texas werewolf stories. I don't know that they're werewolves. I don't, I dang sure don't know what that last one was. That one's a little weird. Uh, it was really weird. But like I said, that's not the only one I got like that. And I'll tell that one on the show on Friday and, and do a little continuation of this. So tune in Friday for the to the live stream, and I'll give you a couple more Dogman stories that we didn't get to get to. Make sure you guys also one. comment on the uh, Facebook page when we drop the link to this episode so that you guys can win something. You know, you might, you never know. You, you could be get lucky, and I don't think we do first-timers, do we? Like, we, we pretty much just choose Yeah, we comment. just choose whoever. Yeah, whatever <clears throat> comment we like. So even if you want something, you can go ahead and comment because we might choose you again if you like the comment. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So for me, Josh Turner, uh, here at Paranormal Roundtable, I got Anthony. Anthony here. Anthony looks like he's Anthony looks like a zombie, like he's about to fall asleep. And then Tony, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure and like and subscribe and send me your stories, and maybe we can talk. Um, if I don't use your story, don't get discouraged. I had a couple people tell me, you didn't use my story, and they got really angry. And I just, I have a lot of, we have a lot. We're backed up. But, but even if you don't want us to say it and you just want to have, like, to tell someone your story, that's fine, too. I mean, we, we send us those. We, we like reading. Yeah. We li- even if we don't use uh, it. We like hearing stories. So, I mean, if it's good, even if we don't ever read them out loud or if we're the ner- never using the show, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we, we will read them. Somebody will read them and us as a team will go over them and figure out which ones we're going to use for the show and we thank you for your submissions, and uh, we thank everybody who talks, and we try to do our best. A lot of people want anonymity with some of these stories. They're kind of like – and even when somebody does give me permission, typically I only use first names because I just don't want uh, anything to come back. There have been some people who have uh, actually been on the show, and you know we're kind of regretting um, somebody you know, like said, messing with them. Because, yeah, there's dirt bags that will give you a hard time. It's hard to tell people that you've seen a werewolf. You yeah. know, but uh, I will make it as painless as possible. So, anyways, folks, thank you for for tuning in and listening. Uh, we appreciate it, and don't forget, we do the giveaway every Friday. Friday is a live stream, two and a half hours typically, and and this is the Tuesday show right here. So, from everybody at Paranormal Roundtable, good night. Bye.